Hey everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cinefessions, where we talk all things media. So today is a 4K review I have been anxiously awaiting. Thanks to Shout Select, we have Red Dawn finally making its 4K debut. I am so excited to talk about this release. I'm actually, I'm upgrading to 4K from a collector's edition DVD that I got for Christmas I don't even know how many years ago now, but yeah, so I mean, the big question now is, was the upgrade worth it? And I am excited to talk about it. This one has a little controversy surrounding it, at least in my eyes, because of the the back of the box here is advertising something that might not be there. So I'll talk about that when we get to the AV side of this. So I'll start with my thoughts on the film itself, hopefully, briefly, we'll see. And then I will talk about AV. I'll mention the special features as well, just so you guys know what's available here. And then I will wrap up my thoughts on this disc overall. So let's do this, guys. Before we get into it, though, if you have a second, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to my 4K review of Shout Select's Red Dawn. I never would have guessed that a movie like Red Dawn would be a favorite of mine, but every time I watch it, I just have a good time with this film. This is from 1984, directed by John Milius, and uh, this one has Patrick Swayze in the lead role, and I would argue that like the second in command here is Charlie Sheen, which plays his younger brother. They are excellent together, but then you also have C. Thomas Howell in kind of the tertiary role, and then you have Leah Thompson and uh, Jennifer Grey in the, uh, the two female roles, which uh, it's funny because uh, in the special features, they're talking how Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey didn't really get along, yet, you know, years after this, they'll go on to do Dirty Dancing together. But anyway, with Red Dawn, we are following this attack on U.S. soil. They end up paratrooping down, and they're outside this high school. That's where we pick up the film, and they just start blowing away people, and it is an insane opening, and it just kind of takes off from there. So we're following this group of high school kids. They end up making their way out out of the town and into the mountains around them and they're going to try to survive. They're not going to head back into the town until they stop hearing helicopters flying by. So we follow like month to month. They go in September, I believe, and then uh, next week time we meet with them, it's October and so we know they've been there a month and we just keep going through the months and uh, they are trying to survive this attack. They're being attacked by uh, Soviets and Cubans, if I'm not mistaken. And it is just like, it. like I said, it picks up up right from the start and it kind of keeps going. Yes, it does slow down a bit. There is definitely some character uh, moments in this, so it does slow down a bit, but it picks up right, right. It goes really quick right at the start, which I always love to see. One of the most interesting aspects of this film and why I feel like it maybe did so well in the mid eighties is because we are following most closely this group of high school characters uh, and Patrick Swayze, who's a little bit older, but they're all peers and they're very much, you know, in that high school mindset. But they're also very much so the rugged, outdoorsy type. They're football players. They uh, spend a lot of time together. The group that we're following are very close-knit friends. And watching them try to survive this is interesting to me. I've always found that idea of kids surviving in the, in the mountains interesting mixed with America under attack. Like, that's just fascinating to me. And actually, I didn't realize it until recently, but John Milius wrote the video game Homefront, which is also about an attack on American soil, which I didn't realize that until recently. So another a video game I really enjoyed. It does kind of go off the rails a little bit at the end of the game, but it's still a fun game nonetheless. And that idea, what you know, drew me to it was America under attack, kind of modern America under attack. Of course, this being in the 80s, but still the same idea. So so I love watching how they're going to survive and watching how this whole thing affects them because their family are, you know, under attack. Even though they're in the mountains, they still have fathers and mothers who are not. And it's, you know, the effect that that has on them. C. Thomas Howell's character in particular, the effect it has on him is pretty interesting. And so I just love watching these characters grow throughout this film, where they start and where they end are in two completely different spots. And I love watching that character arc. And then we have the two girls that are brought 
brought in and they come into the group about a month after the fact but watching them kind of get acclimated with the with the boys in the group I think was pretty interesting as well it's done very quickly but I think it works it's just like a singular moment kind of changes everything with them and it drives the story forward so I thought that worked really well and it makes the two girls just like you know the rest of the guys there which again for a movie from the 1980s that is you know important to point that out that they do that well one thing I really want to talk about because I, I've seen this movie I think now four times and the first three times I watched it I never would have said something like what I'm about to say so this movie it has a reputation for being a very much so a you know Reagan era Cold War era America hoorah pro-war film and I understand that completely that's what I thought of this as well when you watch the special features John Milius talks about how he is pro-military and he is v like extremely patriotic uh, you know he says he has liberal aspects as well but those are also a part of him and so is that there was that intended yeah I think it was you can't really argue with the writer and the director saying that but at the same time, I think there's much more to it than just that. There are moments in this where it almost feels like an anti-war film. And if not going that far, which I don't, I wouldn't go that far, but it, there are some aspects of that. But what it really feels like is showing the dark side of something like this, if this were to happen. There is a rallying cry that Patrick Swayze's character has after he you know, talks to his father, and his father has that very famous, Avenge me! Avenge me! Moment. But in that, he also says, don't cry for me ever again, as long as you both live. And they take that with them when they leave, and they try to live by that as they fight all these different battles that they're trying to do, these different skirmishes. They are basically guerrilla warfare, essentially. And there eventually comes a point where everything is degrading around them so badly that their friends are dying so much around them that eventually in this moment of kind of solitude, Patrick Swayze's character, he does break down. And on top of that, there are other things. We, like, we watch these bad guys in the film basically come up and they're basically sightseeing. But they're going to end up in violence. And so we start. We get to know some characters a very little bit. Small moments where these are just humans. These are people. There's a guy outside of one of the buildings. Miss, maybe you speak at me for a minute. Um, I'll be right back, okay? You, you bring girlfriend? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right here. Bye. It's a human moment. And I think when the writer and the director, when Milius starts humanizing the bad guys, I think that's where you start to get into some of the anti-war aspects of this because it's not just the bad guy. It is a human person who is happens to be on the other side. There's an awesome moment in this where Patrick Swayze's character is debating on whether to kill someone or not, kill one of the bad guys or not. And his brother asks, what makes us different than them if we do this? Why, you know, why do we do this? And his response is, because we live here. Like, that is so absurd, right? Like, when you look at it, maybe it was supposed to be, yes, America, yeah, protect America. But in my eyes, it's, it's, it feels absurd to kill someone just because we happen to live in one country and they happen to be from another and they're both following orders. Well, the kids aren't following orders. They're basically just trying to survive. But at this point, they're kind of in on this war. And so I don't know, I might be completely off base and I totally respect that. But this time through, I really picked up on some of the nuances of this. Oh, and then again, at the, toward the end of the film, again, no spoilers, but toward the end of the film, kind of the general, whatever his uh, title is of the film is humanized as well. When he's writing a letter to his wife saying, I just want to hold you and feel your hair in my hands. Like it, it humanizes the bad guy. And that's when it, you get into those shades of gray. And I think that's important. That's what makes this movie kind of more special than it might otherwise be is just a America hoorah rally cry because I don't care about any of that stuff. That's not who I am at all. Uh, on the political spectrum, I'm going to fall on the opposite side uh, of like a typical, what you would typically think of a movie like this, but I still love this because it does have those aspects in it. And I don't think I realized that before, but Maybe I did, but I was finally able to vocalize it this time. I could point it out and talk about it this time through. So it took me four times, but I finally caught it. You may have caught that much sooner, and you might totally disagree with me, which I absolutely respect. I might be completely wrong. And like I said, according to Milius, I probably am, but that's what I noticed going through it this time. And so that's what made this viewing of it a little bit more special for me. 
outside of that, I mean, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. I've probably rambled on more than I should. The acting in this, I think, is excellent. These kids do such a wonderful job. Patrick Swayze is fantastic in his role as uh, basically the leader of this guerrilla troop now at this point. Uh, the, the women stand for their, on their own and they stand up for themselves and they are strong and just awesome to watch. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Powers Booth is in this, which I always recognize the character, but I had no idea it was Powers Booth until recently watching Extreme Prejudice and absolutely loving Powers Booth in that. And now I realize he plays the downed soldier in Red Dawn that spends quite a good deal amount of time with these kids. And, oh, he's so good. Powers Booth is an amazing actor. And I'm so, like, happy that I, you know, every time you watch another film, you learn something new. You pick up a new actor. You pick up something different. And so I'm so happy I watched Extreme Prejudice to get a respect for what Powers Booth can do. And then going back to Red Dawn and realizing, oh, my God, that's him. Like, he's just fantastic. So it's just, it's a really well-acted uh, film. I think the direction is great. There are some really cool shots in this of just kind of the setting of this film, where it's filmed, I think. It's just, this looks so great. The whole idea, again, of America under attack, I think, is just endlessly interesting to me, and it works really well here. So this is not you know, uh, anything that's going to change your life at all. It's, it, it definitely is an action film, but I think there is a bit more nuance to it than one might expect. So I really enjoy Red Dawn, and I actually liked it more this time than my previous viewing because I upped the star rating, I noticed, on Letterboxd. So this is just a great movie that I absolutely recommend you check out at least once. So I am giving Red Dawn from 1984 four out of five stars. Okay, so let's talk about the audio and visual side of this 4K disc from Shout Select. And this is honestly where things might get a little controversial. So hopefully you're seeing a shot right now of the back of this box because on the back it states that it has a Dolby Atmos soundtrack. I even talked about the fact that it had Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision in my top five anticipated video. Unfortunately, that just simply is not the case. There is only the 5.1 DTS HD master audio track and a 2.0 track. So for whatever reason, they just did not add the Dolby Atmos track to this release, which is super disappointing. Uh, I would have loved to hear the Atmos on this because there are so many different shots where there's like helicopters flying above and it would sound amazing in Atmos, I'm sure. But instead, we're getting the same release that the Blu-ray had. So that's disappointing. That said, though, I thought the sound on this was actually really good. It definitely, you can tell it's a, not the Dolby Atmos. It doesn't feel as vibrant as you would see in an Atmos track, but I thought the surround effect of this worked really well because you have all the bullets flying around. Again, the helicopters, I think, flying around sound really cool. Uh, there are some great explosions in this. It didn't rock my house quite as much as something like Godzilla did on 4K, but I think it still sounded really good. I thought the, the dialogue was mixed really well. I could definitely pick out every bit of dialogue, which sometimes, you, you know, there are some issues with that when you have a lot of special effects going on with it. I thought the audio... Uh, did a really great job of capturing all of that. So even though we are using an older audio track on this and we do not have Dolby Atmos as was advertised by Shout, uh, Shout Factory, I still think the audio on this did a great job. So hopefully maybe in the future, I, I have no idea if they're going to release like a, I don't, I don't know if this is like a, a mistake on their end or if it's just a printing mistake. Honestly, I think it's a printing mistake as opposed to a disc error. So I don't think there's going to be any like, uh, you know, re whatever they, I forget what they're called now at this point, but I don't think they're going to send out any new discs. Uh, I think it's just the packaging that's messed up. But if there, anything changes, you know, follow me on Twitter or Instagram and I will definitely make note of that. But uh, on the video side, I was really impressed with this. So as I said, I was coming from the DVD of this, so I've not seen the Blu-ray. I did watch a little bit of the Blu-ray, though, the disc in here, because this is the 4K and Blu-ray disc combo pack, so it's both uh, discs. Um, and so I did watch a little of that Blu-ray, and you can definitely see the uptick in quality. Now, this is not one that's going to be a, a system showcase, basically. You're, you're not going to show your friends Red Dawn on 4K to impress them. But what you're getting here is just a lot more detail in all of the shots. Everything looks 
looks cleaner. It looks crisper. The blue skies I thought looked amazing on 4K, and this does have the Dolby Vision color grading. And so if you're capable of that, then absolutely go for it. It looks fantastic. Uh, the skin textures I thought looked really great. The mountains looked awesome. The detail in the snow I thought was awesome to see as well. And the night scenes, I think, man, talk about, excuse the pun, a night and day difference from the DVD to the 4K on those night scenes. There is so much detail in there. It just, they feel so rich, the blacks do on this. And I loved that aspect of it. That was without a doubt, my favorite part of this was the dark sequences. The night scenes, I think really popped in this where I never, I've never seen it like that in the past. So uh, for me, that's why this is worth the upgrade. Like I loved the, the night scenes. So this is more of a subtle upgrade for me. Does it change? my experience with the film honestly no it doesn't really change my experience in this case but that said I loved that attention to detail that this disc is able to implement. One thing I will mention is that the film grain on this is quite inconsistent. There are some scenes where the film grain is a lot heavier than in the other sequences. For the majority of the film, the film grain is very light. It feels natural. But then there are some sequences where the grain is much heavier. I have no idea why there would be such a big difference between some sequences, but I did notice that. It might have something to do with the camera that was being used. Frankly, I'm just not sure, but I wanted to point that out because I know some people, uh, film grain is a big deal to them. You either have to have a ton of it or you want none of it whatsoever. And this has a kind of a mixture of both. It doesn't have a ton, but there are definitely sequences where I notice the film grain a lot more than in other uh, scenes. So I don't, I'm not sure about why there's that inconsistency there, but I did want to mention it. So on the AV side of the things, I have to give this disc three and a half out of five. I thought the audio side was great, even though though it doesn't have the Dolby Atmos track as it promised on the back. So because of that, I have to drop it a little bit. And then on the video side, not uh, one of those that's going to knock your socks off at all, but I do love the detail. And if you're a fan of this film, you will appreciate the detail in the dark sequences and those uh, big blue skies in the mountains look really good in this 4K release. Let me touch on the special features a little bit here. So this is the same special features that were on the Shout Select Blu-ray. And actually, when I compared it to my DVD on the back here, you can see there's only one special feature that's different. And that was the new feature length documentary that was released on the Shout Select Blu-ray. So I'll mention no special features on the 4K disc. All of them are located on the Blu-ray. And that one is called A Look Back at Red Dawn. So it's just interviews with uh, the cash director plays a big part in that um, and some of the uh, like some of the more minor characters I guess as well so that was cool to see but it's feature length so you have to really be a big fan of this movie in order to watch it I watched the majority of it before I needed to move on just because I was running out of time last night but uh, yeah good from what I've seen and then the other special features are just pretty standard behind the scenes items. I did love the Red Dawn Rising featurette, which again is available on this one as well. So it's not new, but it's still a good one. You have Patrick Swayze in there. John Milius is in there. Uh, Leah Thompson is in there as well. And just watching or hearing them talk about the film and how much they had, you know, enjoyed filming this, I think is really cool. So on top of that, you have a training featurette, building the Red Menace featurette, and then World War II comes to town. So there are four featurettes in total, plus the original theatrical trailer and that feature length documentary. So like I always say, I don't give all the special features a rating unless I've watched all of them. So I won't give them a rating here, but I wanted you guys to be aware of what is there. This is a good disc with special features, but unfortunately there's nothing new this time around. Overall, this is a really solid 4K release. Yes, the back of the box does advertise something that is not there, and that is a problem. Hopefully, they will fix that on subsequent printings, but for now, that Dolby Atmos track just doesn't exist. So keep in mind, I was coming from the DVD. That's how I watched this previously, but even watching some of the Blu-ray, I absolutely noticed the difference between the Blu-ray and the 4K, and for my money, I am very happy that I upgraded. So this is a disc that your mileage will definitely vary. There are no new special features and the audio track is the same thing we have in the Blu-ray. So if the Blu-ray was good enough for you, maybe save the $30 right now and wait for it to drop to a sale price. But for me, I'm very happy I upgraded. So I am going to give Red Dawn on 4K from Shout Select overall four out of five stars. 
All right, so those were my thoughts on Red Dawn on 4K. I had such a great time with it this time through. And again, I just, I have a different feeling about the movie than I do or than I did previously. And so that's always cool when you can watch a movie a number of times and learn something new or get something different out of it. So Red Dawn definitely holds up. But I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Is this a release that you're picking up? And if so, let me know what you thought of it down there. If not, let me know that as well. Anything and everything you guys want to include down there is always appreciated so thanks so much for all that support but as always guys if you did enjoy this one please hit that like button down below that engagement really does help me out and like i always say i don't just talk movies i talk all things media be it books movies video games graphic novels manga if it's media related i'm interested in it and if you are too you might consider subscribing all right guys so that's going to do it for today i just want to say thank you all so much for watching and i want to encourage you to consume some media today i'll catch you next time <laughs>